Uh, so Jay Cutler, Kaepernick, Romo. All things considered, because there'd be baggage. If you bring Romo, there would be baggage. You couldn't bring him into your uh, organization. He's not going in as a backup. That's what I'm saying. So if you, it's not plausible. But could you say if you're the Rams, do you suppose that there's any chain of any sequence of events that would wind up? What Tony Romo's on the Rams now? Oh yeah, he's the starter for uh, 2017. Now they're going to give Jared Goff. They give him a red shirt year. I mean, which guy do you appeal? Oh, I, Romo is obviously a cut above. Let's reduce it to Cutler and Cap. I guess that's the reason. Where are, are both these guys going to be backups? Is either one of these guys going to be under center starting in Week One, 2017? I think it would be not the ideal situation of the team that signs them. I think they'd want to bring them in as backups. Like you mentioned, both guys come with baggage. I mean, we know the situation with with Kaepernick right now. It's been uh, widely discussed, even with our even with our uh, president as as recently discussed it too. So um, we know what the situation is there. But I do think Kaepernick, if if it wasn't for what's going on with him off the field, he would be an ideal backup type. I mean, we saw him come in play pretty well on a team that had. No weapons, no offense to support him, and he he was productive at least. And so I think he'd be an ideal backup. But Cutler, that's the question. Like, who is bringing in Jay Cutler to be uh, a starter at this point? I don't think it's anybody. I think he's probably one of the best. You know, I think both these guys are probably definitely in the top thirty-two NFL quarterbacks. But the problem is that are they worth bringing in for what you have the questions you have to answer about it and and I don't I don't know that they are and I think you're te- seeing teams don't just take in talent into an, the equation there's a lot of other factors to consider well all things being equal and and they are not as you point out as I say the conflict that would uh, it, that it would impose on a locker room and and, and uh, going up against the cap is not a small issue. More so with uh, with Cutler than Cap, but Cap is not going to take you know isn't going to take six hundred k himself. Right. Um, either way, if you're the Jags, though, what about that? What about a, a, a I mean, as you say, top thirty two QBs. Looking at Blake Bortles last year, that is not a reasonable oh, situation yeah. right. to say a team that suddenly. If you're the Jaguars and you've done again, you've doubled down and made that defense, which which really should be good. Should have been, you know, at least started to put the pieces together. By 2017, I suspect that they'll be better. The offense, um, it, it, you, you feel like, has some potential there. Don't you at least owe it to the fan base? And, you know, the Khan family is saying now even, but you know, come on. But uh, we, we got to be more competitive than this already. Don't you owe it to get Cap or Cutler down there? See, I don't know if you necessarily owe it to do that, but – if you look at what Jacksonville did in free agency in terms of bringing in Calais Campbell, A.J. Bouye, they've kind of addressed some of those small defensive needs. And they traded for uh, Brandon Albert from the Dolphins, who you know is definitely on the back nine of his career. But still, they've plugged holes along the offensive line and on their defense. We know they have talented skill position players uh, at the wide receiver group. It almost sets up well for them to take a quarterback at the fourth overall pick. And I know a lot of people aren't talking about that, but wow. just think, of, think about – what they've done in free agency in in context with all their 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 current roster how it's set up with the fact that they turned over the decision make i mean it's clear that dave caldwell who is blake bortles guy is now in the back seat in terms of decision making so it would be an aggressive move um i don't know if the uh if the this coaching staff or not the coaching staff but the whole regime as a whole if they have the the stones to make that move but it would be a start over thing to take a quarterback at the fourth overall pick uh, if they like one, and I think that there is a chance that that could happen, or they double down on the Blake Bortles era, uh, but it doesn't seem like they're all that interested in bringing in kind of a mid-tier free agent because, frankly, I think um, I just think that it's kind of a lateral move at best.